I don't write anything down for critical reasoning. Uh, I mean, maybe I make a note on one question out of 30. So it's, it's pretty rare that I would put pen to paper and critical reasoning. What I do instead is I role play. Right? I pretend that I'm a person for whom this argument is really significant, like a matter of life and death or a matter of your livelihood. Like, you know, this is your money, right? So I'm pretending that I'm that person. Um, and, and then I, I wonder, well, what's this author's point? Like, you know, why did the author write this thing? And, and what's, what would be the impact for me if the author is correct? Like, if the author's conclusion is true, how would that impact my life? Again, role-playing that I'm this person for whom this really matters. And I find that if I do that, then I don't need to make any notes because this, you know, this is my life. You, you don't take notes in your own life. Uh, when something is a matter of life and death, you just f you feel it on a very deep, you know, visceral level. Uh, and then, uh, once I've really thought deeply about the argument from the perspective of someone for whom it really matters, then uh, the right answer choice tends to just smack me in the face. Like, it's just so clear. It's clear as day that that's the correct answer choice. And if that was answer choice A, I won't even read B, C, D, E. Because ima imagine if I absolutely love A, and then I keep reading the answer choices. Well, the best case scenario is I don't like any of them. The worst case scenario is I like another one. Then what? This is not the kind of test where you love two answer choices and then you start second guessing and revisiting and rereading re the argument and going back and forth among the answer choices. It's not that kind of test. So it's a two minute per question test. So why on earth would I keep reading the answer choices if I absolutely loved answer choice A? Nothing good can come of reading the rest of the answer choices. So I think the biggest difference between me and other test takers is that they, they think that the work has to be done inside the answer choices, but the work has to be done before you get to the answer choices. That's where the, weir the real work is done. And in the answer choices, you really want to just go in and out as quickly as possible. And another thing I do in the answer choices, if I, if I really don't like the beginning of an answer choice, like if I read the first three, four words of an answer choice and I'm like, oh, that's not going to be right, I stop reading that answer choice. Because if the beginning of the answer choice looks bad, you're guaranteed that the end of the answer choice will look great. The end of the answer choice will look fantastic because if the whole answer choice looks bad, nobody will ever pick it. So if the beginning looks bad, guaranteed the... So why would I read the ending? The only thing that would come from me reading the ending is now I'm going to like it all of a sudden because I like the ending. So I'd rather just stop reading that answer choice and eliminate it if I can confidently eliminate it based on the first few words. And yes, I also get to save some time as a result, but, but that's not the main reason why I do that. It's because I, I don't want to become attracted to a trap answer choice. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so that's my approach to critical reasoning, and you're right to bring it up, JD, because critical reasoning doesn't technically require any prior knowledge. Any at all. Right? It's just pure logic. So it's like, well, so how do you improve? You know, you can't really study for it the way that we would have studied for tests in school. How do you improve on something that doesn't require any knowledge? And the answer is you, you change your approach. You change the way in which you approach those questions. Uh, you change your methodology change your habits. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.